Well, I just want to welcome everybody to CrowingRoosterProphecy.com. This uh, 22nd day of June, 2023. And so, here from Northern California. So here at CrowingRoosterProphecy.com, we have just finished our high watch period from June 17th to June 21st. So that window is closed. And uh, so what I want to do is I want to do a follow-up on that. And I've been waiting uh, from the Lord, before the Lord, just waiting for a response. Because I want to give you a right response. Not my response, but heaven's response. And so I've done that and I feel like I've gotten uh, exactly what I need to share with you today. And of course, you know, just based on the preponderance of evidence... Um, I felt that, uh, you know, that it was wise for us to call the bride to a high watch on these dates. And so we're going to talk about that and, um, and go over that in a second. But, you know, I just was captured by something, you know, really ever since Sunday. Uh, the world has been captured by this story uh, and fascinated by it. Just I can't believe the amount of coverage that's being given to this uh, submersible, uh, the the Ocean Gate Company, uh, and the Titan that attempted to uh, to go down and explore the the Titanic wreck at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean on Sunday, and obviously ran into uh, some serious trouble. And as far as I know, even to this moment of recording this video that the um, that the Titan has yet to be even discovered where it's at so uh, just a tragic story and uh, but you know I was looking at some prophetic significance in all of this because just the fact that the world's attention has been captured by this story I believe that there is a message from heaven I want to share with you what I saw uh, I don't know if you knew this, but the uh, CEO and um, uh, founder of the company OceanGate, Stockton Rush, is actually a descendant, a descendant of two of the original signers of the, Inde the Declaration of Independence. <laughs> I just found that uh, more than a coincidence. Now, the two uh, signers that he's a descendant of, one being Richard Stockton from... Uh, from New Jersey and the other being Benjamin Rush from Philadelphia and of course Philadelphia was the location of where the Declaration of Independence was signed. Now do you find all of that just a coincidence? I don't think so. And so you know the world has been captured by okay for you know many many uh, years about the Titanic and that story and you know something just happened to me that was very interesting just two months ago that I wanted to share with you real quick on April 15th I uploaded this article and of course I did a video associated with it I woke up on April 15th early in the morning as I shared with you back then uh, just a time of intercession that I was in and praying and suddenly I went into this deep groaning prayer for about an hour from 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. just at the breaking of dawn and uh, you know it was just one of those rare moments where the Spirit of the Lord just uh, just <laughs> began to groan within my spirit and I really didn't understand why and after about an hour um, I felt as if the Holy Spirit was mentioning Titanic and I didn't really know anything about the dates or anything at that moment honestly and so I looked it up and and to my surprise April 15th was the exact date uh, 1912 that the um, Titanic sank in the Atlantic Ocean at about 2 o'clock 2 a.m. 2 a.m. in the morning after being struck by an iceberg April uh, 14th at around 11 p.m. And so I shared this story with you. And you know, there's some really interesting, really, really tragic realities related to the Titanic. You know, one of them, I, <laughs> I just, 
the hubris of humanity. And, th- and during that time, there were many news clips that uh, were saying that even God couldn't sink the Titanic. And I thought, uh, you know, how prideful of a statement is that? And, you know, it's like I heard, um, I heard Yahweh Vahe say back, uh, humanity doesn't need any of my help. They can sink it on their own. And that's exactly what the greatest ocean liner of that day didn't need any of God's help. Humanity sank it on its own. And, you know, I was thinking of a couple facts about how important, you know, the prophetic ministry really is, even in our day. And uh, I don't know if you know this story, but the watchmen who were perched on the bird tower on the bow of the ship didn't even have binoculars. They weren't even afforded a pair of $2 binoculars so that they could watch for any incoming, um, you know, uh, icebergs that would be a threat to the Titanic. And then, of course, uh, you know, uh, alarm the uh, the captain and uh, let them know of an adjustment that they needed to make. And they could have made that adjustment and the Titanic would have easily diverted uh, the threat and the danger if they would have just had a $2 pair of binoculars. And of course, we know as well that the Titanic uh, received two days of, I think it was a total of 16 warnings of the danger of icebergs. And of course, those warnings went unheeded. And so just a tragic story of human error. And just, I think that we can apply that prophetically to our day Uh, that how we need watchmen that are seeing the dangers ahead and this story that uh, has captured attention of the world this last few days uh, reminds me of what Yeshua shared with me on April 15th in a time of groaning prayer and intercession that America is going down at the bow and so connecting Stockton Rush and his descendants, Richard Stockton and Benjamin Rush, who were signers of the Declaration of Independence, I think speaks volumes to America. And of course, OceanGate is a company out of Washington, the state of Washington. And uh, actually the town that it's from is literally location of uh, my uh, wife's uh, fam- part of her family, Everest. Uh, Washington and so just conveying that which I see prophetically and so you know what I want to do is I want to encourage you when I share this today Satan's final title fight with the bride 623 is exactly what it says in 1st John chapter 4 or 1st John 4 1 chapter that we should test every spirit to see whether they be of God so test the spirits so I want to challenge you today to test what I'm sharing with you. I just shared with you that I believe that I have a response from heaven today concerning the last five days of our high watch here at CrowingRoosterProphecy.com. And so I want to afford you the opportunity in the comment section uh, to respond to whether or not this is uh, a word from heaven or not. And um, I want you to do it in the spirit of the Lord. Now, you, you do it in any other way. You come out me with a religious spirit. You know, I'm going to cut you off quicker than an Ebola virus. Okay, so I'm just asking you kindly, you know, to let's respond uh, in the spirit of the Lord, okay, to uh, any challenges and just do it uh, as a family. And uh, so I just, I want to challenge you to do so, to challenge exactly what I'm saying now. I have said often uh, over the last couple weeks, uh, quoted 1 Corinthians 13, 9, where it says that we know in part and we prophesy in part until that which is perfect is come. And so uh, applying that to whatever it is that I share. Now, Yeshua didn't stand here and say, Phil, that the rapture of the bride is going to take place between June 17th and June 21st. (laughs) Let's just repeat that again. 
Now, but based on the preponderance of evidence, it was wise, I felt, here at Crone Rooster Prophecy, to call the bride to a high watch on these dates. Now, just a little bit of wisdom that I want to apply to this. Uh, did Yeshua tell us exactly uh, the, the very date of his first coming? Did he tell us the exact date of September 11th, 4 BC? Now, looking back, we believe that that was the date, September 11th, 4 BC, was the exact that day that he was born in Bethlehem. Did he tell us the exact time? No, he did not. He didn't give us the time. But there were prophecies that were indicating about his coming. And didn't the wise men, didn't they still uh, seek and sought after the exact timing that then placed them at the exact time and location of his birth. And just I want to apply that to what we are doing at this moment, looking for his coming of the bride of Yeshua. Didn't the wise men still seek out the exact time and place of the location of Christ's birth, even though he didn't give us the exact day? Now, maybe some of you would take the position that we should have insulted and hurled uh, accusations at the wise men for even thinking the thought. And so I think that that is an unwise uh, approach. And I think that heaven clearly calls these men wise men. And so I think the wise are surely seeking out the timing of the coming of Yeshua for his bride. I think that's appropriate application. And so I want to share this with you today. Uh, Satan's final title fight with the bride, 623. And so again, just encourage you to test what I am sharing with you. Now on 614, I shared a video, an article called The Bride's Final Title Fight, 623. Now you can find uh, this here at crowingroosterprophecy.com. The link here to this, if you haven't seen this uh, video, The Bride's Final Title Vite, 623. And of course, 6 is June and 23 representing the year. Now we here at Crowing Rooster Prophecy recognized the, that the battle lines were drawn in the month of June of 2023, like never before. Now, between light and darkness, there's two kingdoms at war in complete opposition to one another. And never has that been more defined than in this month of June of 2023. Now, clearly, for those who have any spiritual discernment, you could see that the kingdom of darkness and the prince and power of the air in Ephesians 2 verse 2 has specifically targeted the month of june of 2023 and we're asking the question why and i already answered this once before but we're going to do this again in the article and video uploaded june 9th called the sons of sodom versus the sons of promise here's the link to that if you haven't seen this video the sons of sodom versus the sons of promise the Holy Spirit gave us the re revelation why. Remember the revelation that I shared with you why? The powers of darkness have targeted the month of June in 2023. So let's just review again. So Abraham and Sarah's son of promise in Genesis 18 was conceived in the month of June on our Gregorian calendar. So if you want to challenge that, just go back to the article and video that I shared and uh, how I came to that revelation and understanding that Yeshua gave me. That Abraham and Sarah's son of promise in Genesis 18 was conceived in the month of June. Now the son of promise was Satan's arch enemy, prophesied by Yahweh in Genesis 3 15 and we know ultimately that it was Yeshua the son of promise that was the very one that sealed Satan's demise 
Of course, here in Genesis 3.15, it says this, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. And it shall bruise thy head, a fatal wound, and thou shalt bruise his heel, speaking of Yeshua. And of course, we know that his feet uh, were nailed to the cross. So we know that he made the perfect sacrifice for our sins and our redemption didn't he and rose again the third day now satan successfully raised up a counterculture in sodom and gomorrah and so in june we're talking about this counterculture called woke and satan did the same thing satan doesn't really have any new tricks in his bag continues to do the same thing over and over again and he successfully raised up a counterculture right in abraham's path in sodom and gomorrah with the intention of snaring Abraham and his family before the son of promise could even be conceived. Now Abraham had to make a choice in Genesis chapter 13. Remember this story where they overlook uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, the plains of the Jordan. Beautiful plains, rich, uh, you know, prosperous looking land that Lot picked, of course. Now, Abraham had to choose either and Lot pitch your tent in Sodom and Gomorrah or pitch your tent in the land of Canaan. Those were the two choices. Now Abraham chose wisely and pitched his tent in Yahweh's promise, right, in the land of Canaan. And Abraham or Lot chose foolishly and pitched his tent in Sodom. So we just see those choices that they made. Abraham chose wisely and Lot chose foolishly. Now Abraham's wife Sarah conceived birthing the son of promise while Lot's wife was destroyed as she looked back to Sodom. Now I'm just sharing with you today the revelation that Yeshua gave me today in the understanding. I'm sharing this with you and, <clears throat> and asking you according to God's word to test the spirits of what I am sharing with you whether it's true or not and whether it's a message from heaven. Abraham's wife, Sarah, conceived, birthing the son of promise, while Lot's wife was destroyed as she looked back to Sodom. Now scholars would say Lot's wife actually died trying to take a selfie. <laughs> just, <laughs> just apply that to 2023. Lot's wife actually died trying to take a selfie. I just believe that speaks volumes to our culture today, doesn't it? Two wives, two completely different outcomes. Now the battle lines are exactly the same in June of 2023 as they were uh, in Abraham's time. As America pitches her tents to Sodom and in Sodom. I think that this picture paints a very clear picture of where we're at in America. The battle lines are exactly the same in June of 2023. Satan's <laughs> bag of tricks haven't changed in millennium of time as America pitches her tents in Sodom. Now many, even in the global Christian community, are pitching their tents towards Sodom. Shocking, but true. You know, I just read the other day where a Christian college um, would not... <sighs> I think they kicked out something with Promise Keepers. The, men, the men's group, the nationwide group called Promise Keepers, uh, they had some kind of statement disowning or... Uh, showing just separating themselves from any participation with other uh, stance of uh, promise keepers and a Christian college uh, beginning to embrace uh, the woke culture of our day. So even Christian colleges preparing people for Christian service in America and ministry are embracing the woke culture in America. 
Now heaven is instructing the bride of Yeshua to pitch your tent towards Canaan, the land of promise, just as Abraham did. Now Abraham is an example to us. Are we not children of Abraham? Should we not follow his example to us? Absolutely. So the bride of Yeshua is pitching her tent towards Canaan land, the land of promise. Now the war, even here on YouTube in 2023, among the Christian community against following Abraham's example is extremely alarming and very telling. And I don't want to go into all that, but I know that other watchmen are experiencing the same thing that I'm experiencing right here on my site in the comment sections from a number of you. Many blessed responses and beautiful responses, but many, many <clears throat> very accusatory, uh, <laughs> accusations, insults. So I just see all of this very alarming and very telling about the condition of the American church in 2023. Just because we desire to follow the example of Abraham. Now how are we following the example of Abraham? Abraham sat in his tent door in Genesis 18.1 looking intently for the one who promised. Absolutely true. Abraham sat in the door of his tent in Genesis 18, 1, looking intently for the one who promised. Now we have already proven here at Crowing Rooster Prophecy that it was the month of June that Abraham's promise arrived. So is it any shock or wonder that it shows great wisdom that at CrowingRoosterProphecy.com that we too sit in the door of our tent looking for the one who promised. Yet many in the Christian community will rail and mock and throw insults at the ones who call the bride of Yeshua to follow in Abraham's footsteps. Again, it speaks volumes to me about the condition, the spiritual condition of the church in America in 2023. Now I stated this community post started this community post with this, the bride's final title fight, 623. Here again is a link here at Crowing Rooster Prophecy to that video. Now a week ago, I uploaded that video and I came across uh, this powerful confirmation and truth, you know, a week later that really shocked me. I wasn't expecting this. The Bride's Final Title Fight, 623. So just remember that number, 623. Uh, and here's the scripture verse in Hosea 2, verse 16 and 17. And it shall be at that day, says the Lord, that thou shalt call me Ishi, and shall no longer call me Baal. For I will remove the names of the Baals from your lips. No longer uh, will her names be invoked by you. Hosea 2, 16 through 17. Now, Ishi in the Hebrew is an expression of marital relationship. And Baal, or Baal, is an expression of a master-slave owner. Now, the Hebrew gematria of husband and wife is 6, 2, 3. <laughs> what are the odds? June... 2023. The Hebrew gematria of husband and wife is 623, which is the exact same Hebrew gematria of new wife, which is the bride adorned for her husband in the Hebrew. Now it shall be at that day, says the Lord, that thou shalt call me Ishi, and shall no longer call me Baal. Now, all my videos and articles in 2023 can be summed up in Hosea 2, 16 through 17. And this is the reality that I have expressed and clarified, uh, trumpeted 
uh, since the beginning of this year, when the bridegroom comes, will he find you ready? Now the final title fight in 2023 is on. And so here at CrowingRoosterProphecy.com, we've been navigating this final fourth watch of the night for 26 months. And so I just want to finish by giving you the priestly blessing as I'm a descendant of the tribe of Levi on this 22nd day of June 2023. May the Lord bless you, may the Lord keep you, and may the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. And we finish by saying that as it says in Revelation 19, and the spirit and the bride say, come. And we say, even so come, Lord Jesus, Maranatha. Maranatha.